As a, as a veteran investor, how has that shaped your thinking on the markets? For example, maybe you can walk us through what you were thinking around this time last year. I mean, it's hard to believe what a year it's flown by, but really sure. as we were heading into this versus where we are now. Sure. Uh, you know, our, our portfolios last year uh, at this time uh, were, were focused on uh, kind of long themes. Uh, and frankly, uh, travel and entertainment uh, were one of those themes. Uh, on a secular basis, uh, travel has has always been uh, an industry that grows faster than the general economy. Uh, but as we learned more and more about the pandemic, uh, we sold our positions in travel-related uh, stocks such as uh, Boeing, uh, which was coming out of the uh, issues related to the uh, 737 MAX. Uh, and we also had positions in Marriott. Uh, and then with the uh, decline of the market, uh, we were able to buy uh, very high quality growth franchises that had been trading at very uh, elevated levels. And we were able to rotate the portfolio into uh, some of those stocks that we really liked the businesses, but we didn't like the valuation at that time. And so, uh, so we made some changes in the portfolio that were, uh, were quite fundamental to the uh, performance that uh, we were able to produce last year. And, uh, and and make last year a, a great year for uh, for the Marsico uh, Focus Fund. Uh, we were up over 50% last year. And, you know, it's interesting. You've got the market story. You've got the real economy story. As devastating as this has been for so many families around the world and, and the global impact on the economic front, you know, I think many of us have been, at the very least, pleasantly surprised with the ability to think about the next day uh, and the rollout of these vaccines. And I don't have to tell you now that there's a lot of exuberance in the stock market. I mentioned off the top, you've got a lot of people referencing back to a period like 1999, which you know well as someone who was looking at technology stocks long before a lot of people were. Are there comparisons in your opinion between then and today? Uh, you know, I remember the uh, period of uh, 1999 uh, uh, very, very, very clearly, uh, there were a lot of companies uh, that thought that they were going to benefit from the advent of the internet. Uh, and in most cases, uh, most of these businesses didn't have any revenues. Uh, people were speculating as to how these services would be used. Uh, I'll never forget uh, Qualcomm, uh, the last uh, week of of, uh, 20, of uh, 1999 was, was up over 25% one day. Um, and it wasn't a short squeeze. Um, so, uh, so yes, there was a lot baked into the markets then. Uh, interest rates were also another major factor. They were much higher uh, at that period of time than they are today. Uh, you know, inflation has been uh, very moderate over the last 25 years, uh, under 2%. Uh, you know, Chairman uh, Jay Powell was uh, talking about these factors yesterday. Uh, we've had tremendous uh, productivity that's been brought about by uh, new business models related to the Internet. Um, I think that these models uh, are very, very durable. Uh, I believe that over the next 20 years, uh, the amount of business done over the Internet can increase by five or six fold. Uh, so, so the runway for a lot of these businesses that are benefiting from new business models related to the internet are very sustainable and very defensible. You've seen how sustainable and defensible they've been uh, through this period around the pandemic. Um, I really believe that if we didn't have certain of these businesses, uh, the economic situation uh, would have been uh, dramatically uh, much worse than, than what, we, what we've experienced. And let's dive deeper into how you're thinking about certain stocks too, Tom. I mean, this this e-commerce phenomenon, alive and well. We all see it every day with you know Amazon packages showing up on our doorstep. You know, Amazon's a stock that you guys stay focused on, but you also stay focused on everything around that. Uh, UPS, which you wouldn't necessarily think of, for example, as a tech play, but a company that certainly is at the forefront of all of this e-commerce activity. You know, uh, UPS is a 100-year-old company. Uh, obviously, it's in the logistics area. 
Um, but but a new CEO has has moved into uh, UPS, Carol Tomei, and we've known Carol from her background at Home Depot, uh, where she was the CFO for uh, uh, I'm going to say 15 to 20 years, and uh, just watching how Home Depot operated their business and, and continued to improve their practices over year over year, uh, we thought that Carol would bring that to uh, UPS. And uh, she's been a board member at UPS for, I think, about 20 years before she took the uh, CEO job. And uh, she's, mm. she's done a big review of uh, UPS's businesses. And uh, her first move has been to uh, sell the, uh, uh, the uh, freight unit of uh, UPS. Uh, and this transaction should close uh, sometime in the second quarter. Uh, but she believes that uh, she can make UPS much more productive. And if you believe that the uh, internet is, excuse me, if uh, e-commerce is going to grow uh, five or six fold over the next 20 years, uh, you're going to need to have uh, delivery services, especially for the last mile, uh, to provide uh, uh, access uh, to, to these businesses, to, uh, to their customers. Um, also, uh, UPS had over 500 products that they were talking to, uh, to their customers about. And, uh, and Carol really thought that that was uh, confusing and, uh, and, and probably uh, too expensive. And if they could focus on more and more of their uh, products that were more mainstay to their businesses, um, you know, she could be much more product, they, they could be much more productive than what they are now. Uh, so I think that with uh, UPS along with uh, Federal Express, uh, I think that they're understanding their, their businesses that much better and uh, moving their businesses to, uh, to higher returns uh, that we should see over the uh, coming years. And UPS, just uh, to your point, uh, announcing that deal with TFI here in Canada. You know, when we talk about growth, before I let you go, Tom, uh, what we should emphasize with your strategy has always been concentrated. There's a, there's a lot of opportunities out there, but you have to have your selected picks, the ones you have the deepest conviction around. Um, how do you balance that with what appears on the surface like FOMO? People have a lot of access today to trade in just about everything. They're constantly reminded online about what their friends may be making in the market, and that creates a certain level of sort of uh, uh, fear of missing out, if you want. And then we've got this new phenomenon building, as you've seen with um, the the retail investors uh, who have been gathering on Reddit to fuel into these these other stocks. Um, what what's your takeaway from the way the markets look today versus other points in your career? Uh, you know, John, uh, I have been focused on uh, focused investing for for all of my career. I think I was one of the first portfolio managers to move to a concentrated portfolio. And uh, we really believe that if you put your best ideas into the portfolio, um, that will create the best returns over a period of time. Uh, we try to be long-term investors uh, looking for uh, for themes that, can uh, exploit can be exploited over a number of years uh, that have a long runway. Uh, so the, the short term activity in the port in the uh, stock market uh, is less interesting to us. Uh, what what's going on right now with uh, with Reddit and and the shorting activity that's taking place? Um, I, I think is a a phenomenon that uh, that will end up. Uh, changing, we'll, we'll see some changes as far as regulation is concerned. Uh, I would imagine that short positions uh, basically will be made known to the public, uh, whereas in the past uh, uh, they've not been readily uh, available. Uh, the probability of shorting more than 100% of the stock, I think, uh, is, is something else that will probably be changed. Uh, so I think that this is a, a short-term phenomenon, and uh, it'll get worked out uh, as we move forward here.